Hiya, I'm Jasper, and welcome to your video review for 1917. It's a movie set in, say it with me, 1917. Alrighty. Uh, so, as always, I'm going to give the good, the bad, and the furry. To start off the furry, if you like rats, if you like the rat furry, well, mostly just rats, not necessarily rat furries, but you get what I'm saying, uh, then hey, check out this movie, because I'd say there's more rats in this movie than in many other movies. Anywho. Moving on to the good and the bad. Uh, this movie stars a couple of people uh, that I've never heard of. Uh, I, I hope to see them in other things. Cool, but... Uh, uh, um, and then there's... I'm going to call them cameos from some people that they meet along the way that are some notable actors, but I'm not going to bother listing them because I didn't even know they were in this until watching, and most of them didn't really stick around all that long, so yeah, that's all the screen time they're going to get from me. Moving on, uh, this is an interesting movie because it is shot in such a way to make it look like it was basically one to three continuous takes. Um, I say this because when I first, like when I watched this movie, I thought that it was actually shot or supposed to look like it was actually shot in like three takes. That is not the case. What it is, is that there's one obvious, like, hey, here's a cut to black type of thing uh, in this. And then there's, in my opinion, one other time that was a very obvious, even a layman could probably tell that there was a cut there. So basically, one segment, two segment, three segment type of setup, and otherwise look like it's one shot. Part of why I was confused on this is because I... Because it was, in my brain, supposed to be just three takes, I was looking to see where things were stitched together, to see what was changed and what was different, or where, you know, what take they took for what. Um, and in this case, there was a couple of times where I was like, wait, those, like, dirt or mud smudges don't match exactly on these dirt or mud smudges, so what happened there? Where was the cut there? And then I'd, like, think about it and be like, oh, yeah. It's probably where the cut was. So it wasn't quite the movie that I was expecting. But that being said, uh, from the trivia that I saw, it was shot in such a way that like the shortest continuous take was 39 seconds and the longest was over 8 minutes. So while yes, there was more cuts than I was initially expecting, uh, there is it is still, I would say, an achievement in filmmaking, in acting, coordination, etc. So just filmmaking in general, to achieve this type of movie as long as it is to make it look like there's only two in my opinion obvious cuts but outside of that you know you'd have to be looking for it or be one of those people that is used to like the swipe cuts and knows some of the filmmaking tricks otherwise i think that they did very very well at that and aside from the neat way that it was filmed i thought this was very good obviously you're following you know our two main actors throughout the whole film basically uh, without getting into spoiler territory you basically follow them the whole film and it was interesting to see them be able to just I don't want to say transition but to make it believable that this is just this is the journey that these guys are on and their interactions were on point and everything just it just really worked well so obviously it really depends on the main actors and these guys absolutely nailed it I also want to give a shout out to the extras because the, I'm sure they had a hard time of maneuvering around the cameras and the cameramen while still once they were getting on screen looking like they hadn't just maneuvered around the cameramen in order to do what they needed to do in the action. Um, as you would imagine from a movie that is mostly shot in continuous takes or pretty much all shot in continuous takes, uh, this is... They have a lot, it's it's just basically all practical set. Uh, I'm not going to say that there was no additional CGI, so like Mad Max Fury Road, everybody's like, this is the pinnacle of not having CGI. It's like, no, 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 it's the pinnacle of knowing how to combine real world with CGI, because there was a lot of CGI in Mad Max, they just used it in a way to enhance the awesome amount of real world stuff that they had. I would say this is kind of the same way, in that they it was clearly pretty much all or mostly practical effects with CGI assisting and filling in uh, some things. Now, I, I say assisting, not like it was like, oh, that was CGI, but it was like one of those things where, you know, just knowing what you know of the human body and what 
actors or props that it would be exposed to, you know that it had to have been some CGI to, to fill some things in. Um, the music was good. Uh, I thought the pacing was pretty good up until, I would say, maybe about the 50 to 30 minute mark from the end. So, like, when you had 50 minutes left all the way to the 30 minutes left, I was like, come on, come on, let's go, come on, come on, you, got, you gotta go. Um, <laughs> but then the last 30 minutes is just another just awesome take. I will say that careful if you decide to watch a preview for this movie, because I was in theaters when this movie was coming out, came out, and it was like one of the pre-trailer time frames, just got to the theater early enough, and they were showing, like, the coolness of how this movie was shot in what appeared to be, you know, one take, or just one continuous take, even though it was stitched together, but they were showing that, and so the scene that I saw then was, like, the last five minutes of the fucking movie, <laughs> so... The whole movie, I was like, when's that scene going to come? When's that scene going to come? When's that scene? And then the last one, I was like, oh, now is when it shows up. So I've been looking forward to this the whole time, and here it is. Like, this is why you don't watch trailers. Watch my reviews instead of the trailers so you know without having the things ruined. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so, yeah. <sighs> I... I liked the settings in this, the, the I, I call them sets, but I'm sure that most of them were real world locations with some, you know, added set pieces. I thought that they did really well with that. Like I said, the pacing was good, the music, the lighting, which is one of those things that is really important with this. And you know what? They did an excellent job of having it be dark, you know, for the atmosphere and for the actors being able to see or what they can't see, but still bright enough that I could see what the fuck was going on. Take a hint, House of the Dragon, okay? <laughs> Season 2, do better on that. Uh, anyway, so this was really good, and I definitely give it a thumbs up, assuming you are one of those people that appreciates the single continuous shot style. Like if you watched Ong Bak or, you know, a lot of the Tony Jaw type movies, or even I would say Matrix 1 had some really long takes with the fight scenes relative to a fight scene length versus cut ratio. Um, if you're one of those people that appreciates that, then I would say that this is a movie that you'll enjoy. Also, you have to like war movies because it's set in 1917 during World War I, uh, and the story is basically the guy, uh, the guys are tasked with delivering a like, hey, the, like this, this needs to happen or not happen, so go, go tell them this, take these orders, go forth, don't get killed, good luck. Okay, so yeah, really good movie. Um, that's really all I have for this one. Thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you at the next one. Bye.